Black Myth Wukong has had a whirlwind of news, from its stellar first impressions to the controversy around its missing Xbox Day One port, to its insane launch numbers. All news is centered around this game. Just when we thought that one particular part of the story fizzled out, it comes back. That story is Black Myth Wukong is secretly timed exclusive for PlayStation 5. Now, Paul Tassi of Forbes and IGN simultaneously reported this latest rumor. However, it has quickly been refuted. Other creators in the gaming space said that rumor, the rumors are wrong and are based on a quote unquote misunderstanding. Now, Paul Tassi has tried to call out one of these possibilities given by the refuter, but doesn't that totally annihilate the steadfastness of his claims? Or is it, or is there more? to this that Tassie and IGN are privy to that we just don't understand. We tackled all of this in the next installment of The Spill, our gaming hot topic video series. Hold on to your seats because we got a dang good show. Let's get into this one. Yeah. What's up people, it's your boy MM2K of Hard Knock Digital Culture, Cloud Dosage in here. MM2K Gaming back again with another episode of The Spill. This is where we talk about the hot topic video thing of the day. Before we get into this one, though, do us a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and rock those bells for notifications, please. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to break this up into a few sections. First, we're going to talk about the story. We're going to talk about what was reported and how it was attempted to be debunked. We're gonna talk about what I believe and why. And then lastly, I'll give my conclusion. So first, let's go to the story. In order for me to go to the story, I gotta show you the report. And that report is right here. All right. So this is a uh, tweet from Tom, Paul Tassie. <laughs> I was about to call him Tom, uh, Tom Warren. Same difference, right? Uh, Paul Tassie says, a source with knowledge of the situation has told me that Black Myth Wukong is not currently on Xbox because of an exclusivity deal. It is not delayed because of any sort of technical issue. And he tries to back this up originally by saying, look, from the start, the statements from Game Science and Microsoft conflicted with each other. Game Science citing optimization when Microsoft cited deals with other platform holders. So he's actually trying to lead, lead credence to whatever he was informed of by whomever that, hey, what game science says doesn't jive up with what Microsoft said. So something's fishy here. And he's putting the onus on game science being behind the, the, the fishy business. Like we don't have Microsoft actually coordinating with journalists to do fishy stuff, right? <laughs> we got plenty of examples. And if you're watching this as part of the bigger podcast which is in a row podcast episode 73 just stay tuned i'll get into all those bigger examples later but that is the story let me now show you how it's being debunked right and shout out to my brother j dub now i love j dub that's my bro broadband bully shout out but it, it pains me because my brother j dub as much as i love him he's a troll right <laughs> he loves trolling xbox and making fun of xbox he'll say anything to make xbox look bad but i've noticed that over the last few months i've had to go to the trolls to get the accurate synopsis of what's going on i had to go to the playstation trolls because a lot of my xbox brethren they are jumping out of the window for stuff that they emotionally want to be true this is not a good sign of gaming discourse when I got to go to the trolls to get the truth. But shout out to J-Dub. J-Dub put this out here and it properly puts into perspective Paul Tassie's claim versus the claims of other people who have more seasoned patterns of accuracy behind them. All right, so here goes. He says, Paul Tassies versus Jeff Grubb and others, battle of the trusted sources, who will win? <laughs> so we got Paul Tassies tweet that I just showed you. And then we got Jeff Grubb who says, no sunny mo money marketing deal keeping Black Myth off of Wukong. And then lastly, we got Nick Sh uh, uh, Special Nick who says, it's not what I heard in retweeting what Paul Tassie has to say. I heard there was a misunderstanding around this stuff. I heard Sony only paid to get the port done. No exclusivity, right? 
but Paul tries to go further and I'll show you in a little bit where he tries to refute all this or does he even try to refute all of it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you would call it, right? Um, but yeah, so you have a lot of stuff going on here. Um, that claim coming out, IGN actually backing it up too. what, what Paul Tassie said. But that's not a good group to have you back you up, having, having to back you up. Where you have Jeff Grubb and Special Nick, who have who are way more seasoned as far as giving us accurate information, especially as of late. We'll get into that. All right. So that's where we're at right now. Okay. So let me talk about what I believe. Now, I'm going to be very clear, very transparent here. I am not in the know here. I don't know what actually is the truth i can't say it with 100 percent certainty but i'm gonna try to use patterns and common sense here to come to a conclusion for the moment i'm not in the know here but i highly doubt this rumor I, I'm, I'm looking at this from a playstation perspective what is the point of a non-marketing exclusive deal right like we had a similar circumstance before we had a similar circumstance where due to technical problems with the Xbox Series S, um, PlayStation got Baldur's Gate 3 timed. That meant a lot because Baldur's Gate 3 last year was the game of the year in a major way. So if you're a console holder, and you kind of exclusively have that console wise, that's gonna highly affect the amount of consoles that, that, you're, that you sell. Even if it's a de facto um, exclusive due to uh, systematic issues. What am I talking about? Let me show you this. This is a report of PlayStation's activity from Sony. This comes from Sony directly that shows how many consoles they shipped. It shows, it shows all a bunch of stuff, but it shows you how many consoles they've shipped doing the PlayStation 4 era and versus what they're doing now. All right. So when you look at the PlayStation 4 era, you look at all their fiscal years, which end in April and March, the highest amount of consoles that they were able to ship were 20 million. They were able to do that in, in the fiscal year of 2016. They actually exceeded that by almost a million in fiscal year 2023. And this is the same year where um boulders gate three came out and you know did some some good numbers for them reasonably for the playstation platform among other things spider-man and whatever else was in that year they had a phenomenal year and they were able to sell more ship more playstations in that year than they ever were able to do in the playstation 4 era so there was a marketing push that sony put behind the fact that it was a timed exclusive. I mean, was, I mean, that it was a temporary exclusive. You can get this on PlayStation. They put a push behind that marketing and it led to crazy pre-order sales, a whole bunch of stuff. By Sony being active and vocal and letting it be known, you want to play this on console? Come here. It led to them selling more consoles than ever. In a year where PlayStation saw a big dip quarter to quarter in their dealing with margins and they want to sell more consoles why wouldn't they run back that same successful strategy that had them sell more or ship more consoles than they ever have in the ultra successful playstation 4 era so just look just using again common sense and business sense it doesn't make any sense why they wouldn't say oh there's an exclusive going on right doesn't make any sense why wouldn't why they wouldn't be behind it why they wouldn't push it you didn't see such push this time around when it came to uh, Black Myth Wukong. As a matter of fact, not only did you really not see that push in marketing or that participation in marketing, but these dudes put their first party exclusive. They launched it around the same time that this launched. <laughs> like, come on. Why wouldn't they? Again, this was uh, like the most talked about game for 2024. Just like Baldur's Gate was like the talked about game of 2023. Why wouldn't they operate that, that, that same formula? Hmm? Why wouldn't they? 
Okay. All right. So that's thing number one that makes that rumor weird to me. Another reason why that rumor is just weird to me is when I look at the two sides, Jeff Grubb and uh, Nick's uh, special Nick versus Paul Tassie and IGN. Simply put, I just trust Jeff Grubb and Special Nick more than the other two. Jeff, even recently, Jeff correctly predicted the PlayStation State to play, you know, the time from that it was coming amongst others. Special Nick has been right on content coming from Xbox going third party. In contrast, IGN and Paul just aren't that trustworthy. IGN, when, when the original rumors of the Black Myth Wukong um, rumors veal started happening um, via something that some content creator had said, and check out my our prior video on that to get more details on that. IGN first rode the exclusivity bandwagon and then had to retract it because they didn't know what they were talking about. Now they're back on. Paul's perception of information has always been off. Like his Helldivers 2 lost 90% of its player story when it just meant that there was a 90% drop in concurrent players. Doesn't mean that there's 90% less people playing. It just means that there's less overlap because people are having shorter play times. Um, Matt Piscatella proved him wrong. <laughs> the fact that, the, you know, it was still charting. That Helldivers 2 was still charting high on PC. So... Paul Tassie's perception on this and a lot of things is just way off. And now you have a situation where Paul Tassie is actually trying to co-op one of the things that I believe Nick's uh, special Nick said. He says, I have a, I have a lot of respect for Jeff and Nick. I would not have published without what I consider to be an extremely authoritative source. Frustrating to not be able to say more. Yeah, I bet you it's frustrating. It's not probably not because you don't have anything. Uh, you, you're not allowed to say it. They, they probably aren't providing you anything. Situations have been described to me as bizarre, which I can certainly agree with at this point. So trying to use buzzwords to fancy up this rumor, which is a vapor right now, that, that doesn't do anything. Let's try to play on people's ignorance and dumbness. And, and again, I know there's plenty of them out there that follow you, Paul, that love your tweets. You, you got a you got an army of quote unquote Mensa candidates following you but we're all not in that same category and then to make matters even worse you follow up with this you say well based on what they're saying it seems possible a temporary exclusivity deal was done for paying to get a port done on PlayStation side without paying for a traditional marketing deal hold on whoa, 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 whoa. why are you co-opting something that they're saying when you're so adamant that not only the person but the information is spot on can't the person that told you this confirm that at the least that doesn't give them away they don't they don't have ways of confirming on how they know in a concrete fashion if this is um, an exclusive deal you gotta now co-op what somebody else said when you came out and jumped out the g-ride so forcefully that doesn't add up bro it doesn't add up at all no no way no way jose and then to make matters worse on a more serious note as it relates to marathon and bungee both ign and paul have done some recent glazing of bungee that A, appears to put workplace conduct in a much better light than what it actually was based upon the recently released story from Jason Schreier of Bloomberg about the, uh, I guess, the game director of Marathon, longtime uh, exec or so, whatever, at, at Bungie. Him getting fired over inappropriate actions with some of the female workers there. You had IGN, while all this is happening, IGN doing a puff piece instead of doing their research and saying, oh yeah, but Bungie cleaned it up, when there was evidence to the contrary. And secondly, you had Paul do an incomplete reporting, negligently allowed said game director at Bungie to project his horrible content or conduct onto a 
content creator and, 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 and projecting all this onto him, making him seem like the cretin that he actually was, that that game director actually was. And in doing so, he's provi- he provided him cover to continue, to continue his misconduct. It kind of reminds me of, remember way back in the day, uh, Representative Yi out of, uh, I think he was out of San Francisco, that was talking about video games are so violent and they're so bad, and he wanted to ban Grand Theft Auto and do all this crazy stuff, right, make all the games mature. Come to find out the dude was running a trafficking and a drug ring, <laughs> and he got busted. So can you imagine if, if a reporter was running cover said Representative Yee is the best, didn't do any research, if there was evidence out there that he was doing this stuff, but just ignored that to make him look good and help him in his campaign of projecting his actual creepiness onto someone or something else. You could argue that's what our good friend Paul did. So with that said, here's my closing. This whole situation just seems weird. I don't know why this is coming out now or who the source is or the validity. All I can say is I can't jive with it. And based on their prior indiscretions, IGN and Paul Tassie, and the arguably unethical journalistic conduct from them both, I suggest this. Without your, your, your quote unquote source revealing themselves, demand that the source provides concrete evidence that you can release publicly that there is a deal something that they should have or witness if making said claims otherwise leave this alone because that just makes this vapor as it is it does no one any service speaking about this definitively on something that cannot be substantiated based on you all's prior history we're definitely not letting you off with just trust me, bro. That's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Because like I always say, here's what I think. And if you did like this, uh, check out the links below to follow me. Also, if you're watching this as um, part of NRO Podcast 73, stay tuned. We're going to be talking about this in greater detail. Um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Some stuff going on with Marathon. We're going to talk about that deeper in Black Ops 6. If you are watching this as in standalone VOD and you want to check out that podcast, click the card to your left now. Click that card. It'll take you there. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.